Uh, so two things happened today that are uh, critically important in, in their respective states and indicators of where I think our entire union is headed with uh, respect to two issues. Uh, first, the state of Florida has passed their name, image, and likeness bill. Uh, California did it first, but if you remember in the California bill, it doesn't go into effect until January of 2023. It allowed essentially a buffer for the NCAA to figure out what they wanted to do, but for all intents and purposes, it put them on the clock. Like, whatever you do, do it by then, because by then, our our kids can, can make money. Well, today, the state of Florida passed their name, image, and likeness bill, and it goes into effect January of 2021. That means this coming January. That means nine months from now, which means the NCAA, your, your timeline just got rapidly sped up. So I don't know how, I don't know how the calendar can flip to 2021 without the NCAA enacting a policy that allows uniformity under name, image, and likeness. And to catch those up who aren't familiar, essentially that means student athletes are not going to get paid, but they can make money on their name, image, and likeness. So if a student athlete could do endorsements, they could do appearances, they could sign autographs and make money. It's not the university or the state paying them like a salary, but allowing them in the free market to go make money. And a lot of people say, well, what if this recruit gets a cart? Like you really don't think that a lot of that's happening right now? I'm sorry, everywhere but the school you cheer for. My bad. Anyway, point being, I'm very much in favor of this. Uh, Y'all know how I feel about that. If it's going to benefit student athletes, I'm generally going to be for it, that I'm for this. But that's critically important because it's going to happen by 2021, by January of 2021 in Florida. And when... When decisions like this are given a deadline, they tend to speed up. Back in 2011, when the NFL had their strike, and or the lockout, I guess it was in that instance, what happened? Ultimately, you got toward the start of the season when camps were going to start, and it, it created urgency, and they got a deal done. We see that happen often. So this is good. This just creates more urgency now for. This just creates more urgency for the NCAA to get the name, image, and likeness thing done. And this will be the last calendar year without it because by January 2021, it's happening in Florida. And before then, it's going to go, go into effect across the, you know, across the country in the NCAA because it, it has to. Meanwhile, the Louisiana legislature, which convened today, is going to consider their own name, image, and likeness bill, which likely is going to pass because they're passing everywhere and should pass everywhere. The other thing that was very interesting that happened today, and this is where I would actually like some feedback because in my opinion the name image and likeness thing it's going to happen you've got too many states now that have all agreed upon it in some form or fashion that the NCAA has to do something uniform it, because you can't have Florida go in effect in 2021 and you and and California go in effect in 2023 and another state I'll, you know not allow certain endorsements or cap it or whatever the case may be you can't have 50 different name, image, and likeness policies because then the NCAA has to govern 50 you know, in conjunction with 50 different state legislatures, which is why they were lobbying Congress to say, hey, give us one federal law instead of 50 different state laws. But either way, it'll get done by January of next year. The other one that's interesting is that the state of Illinois today became the 15th state with legal sports gambling. Uh, they are estimating that the state of Illinois will generate $60 million annually in tax revenue due to sports betting. Uh, The state of New Jersey is over $100 million annually. And the reason in part is because New Yorkers are leaving New York and going to New Jersey to place bets. Literally, because on online wagers, they have the state lines geofenced I, I mean i was like with you know, on your your phone on gps on your phone it knows when you cross the state line so there are people in new york who will ride ride the train or 
or in their car, go into New Jersey, just cross the state line, place the bet on their phone, and then go back. New York is is losing a major opportunity because of that. And what was happening in Illinois is they're bordered by Indiana, which had allowed sports betting. And so now Illinois is going, enough of this. Like We're not going to let our people go across state lines to gamble in our neighboring state to give them that money, and we're not getting the revenue. Well, hello, Louisiana. Here we are, where our neighboring state, Mississippi, was the quickest to enact sports betting. Last week, a week ago today, I was at the Beau Rivage in Biloxi, and their sports book is gorgeous. Like, I get it. I get why people would leave here, and instead of going to spend a weekend in New Orleans, go spend a weekend on the coast at the Beau or at one of those other places and hang out at the sports book, eat, gamble, drink, whatever, watch games. It's a great time if you want to do it. Do it legally. So I don't care if you like politics or not. I hate politics. I won't pay a lick of attention to anything they're doing at the tall building downtown because it just doesn't matter. Go go have your party down there. Have your debates. Vote on your bills. It's not going to change my life any. I don't care what you do. But if you have an R or a D next to your name, I don't care. Louisiana must do this. You must. Because it's happening and we as a state collectively are losing money. So all the things that you all argue about all the time that, that you think are actually changing and nobody ever changes anything, if it's roads or if it's teacher pay or police pay or parks or health care, whatever, all the things that people argue about all the time and it's really just you know, you know pet projects and stuff like that, if you actually want to pay for the things in our state to make our state better, here's a, a foolproof way to generate revenue that's already being generated, but it's going to our neighboring state. I mean, this is one thing where I'm locked in. I mean, the the two things that Louisiana could do instantly right now, that the legislature could do right now, that could fix so many of our financial issues, sports betting, marijuana. Do you realize the state of Colorado, since they enacted that legalized weed, has generated $1.2 billion, since 2014, $1.2 billion. And I don't smoke weed. I've never smoked, honest to God, hand on a Bible. I've never smoked weed in my life. Not once ever in my life have I smoked weed. So it's, it's not like I'm a pothead just hoping you legalize it so I can smoke weed. I don't, I've never smoked it in my life. If you do, enjoy your life. Just don't screw up mine. Legalize marijuana, legalize sports betting. Tax it. Things that are already happening anyway, instead of dig, sticking your head in the sand, legalize it, tax it, and solve a lot of other financial issues in our state. 